1st April 2am, 10 Kent College Dubai pupils and their two teachers met at Dubai Airport to embark on a week's field study into the varying habitats which Malaysia and Borneo had to offer. No one knew what exactly to expect, but one thing was for sure, memories and experiences which, which will last a lifetime were to be gained. My favourite moment was the first day when we went to the mangrove and it's not like the mangrove we have in Dubai, it's oh, a mangrove, no no no, no. it's oh, no. very muddy so you put on your big boots and you step and it gets stuck and then if you're Fatima you get stuck knee high and if you're Fatima once you get out you get stuck again. This moment for me was probably when we went in the mud and we would always fall over and then our boots would get stuck in the mud and we'd have to get out of our boots to get the boots. It was absolutely hilarious. By the end of the day, everyone is covered in the mud. We were at a... KK Wetlands. Uh, yeah, the KK Wetlands. And it's actually um, a part of the mangroves that has been... Um, it was partially destroyed and they've started re like repopulating it, recolonizing it to build a big, um, big mangrove forest. What are you counting on? Heritage. Okay. Hello and welcome. We'll be counting Hello. heritage. <laughs> this is our table. It's a waterproof table with a pencil. The pencil is waterproof. Let's a look. And here we go. On the second day of being in Borneo, we went to Gaia Island. After we checked out the area, we did a bit of reef surveying to see how much coral bleaching and dynamite fishing there was. We also checked out how many parrotfish, sea urchins, different types of seaweed and more. We wanted to see the biodiversity of the reef between the dynamite fished reef and the healthy reef. Like various species of angelfish or butterfly fish, which are the big flat ones. And there's one right here. They're really, they're really, really pretty. And you've got... They throw a lot of dynamite and explosives into coral reefs to kill all of the fish and then they just float up. But doing that, one like kills all the fish and it blows up the coral, which it, it just ruins the coral reef so any other fish that wants to come there can't. Cause it can't. Really quite damaged reef here from dead white fish in. Died right fishing here? Yeah? Oh, and when was it banned? Actually, they banned a long time ago. Since, <coughs> um, since the fish department has um, you know, become a yeah. under the government. It's yeah. illegal, yeah, no? It's illegal. It's very sad, it's because um, two, days, two days ago, the government um, called the person actually killing the, the shark. Oh, really? Well, Oh. Whale shark? Yeah, whale shark. Oh, okay. It's um, 50 kilo of fin. 
Really? How many whale sharks? They kill is like um, 20 of them. 20? Yeah, yeah, they just take the fin. Yeah, exactly. But yeah. it's not happening here, it's not happening at the Samporna. Okay. Yeah. So this is maybe 10 years yeah. or more, the dynamite fishing has been yeah. banned. Yeah. And yeah, look at the damage. Exactly. investigated two different coral reefs, one that was protected and one that was unprotected. At the protected one and the unprotected one we looked for living creatures and stuff and obviously in the protected one there is lots of living stuff like sea urchins and parrotfish and colourful coral but in the unprotected uh, coral there is nothing except dead coral. On this day, we went to a river to measure the carbon oxygen demand, the CO3, the CO2, the pH, the NH4, the NO2, the temperature and the electrical conductivity of the river. We did this using probes and we did this to measure the overall health and cleanliness of the river. And we measured the same river, river from different sites, site A, site B, site C. So like the highest point, the middle point and the lowest point. We're doing some very sophisticated scientific experiments identifying different types of invertebrates in this river that is flowing. Every time we scoop, we're going to dip it in here and inspect the key and see what we have in here. Oh. We found a bug. What bug? Um, a water bug. How are you going to identify them? Because there's a key that Chris is holding. It's, this is a water spider. I'm find getting... Find out what's in... No, it's find the richness of being stuck in the river and see if the water quality is good or not because if there's more species then it's better quality and we're mainly searching for invertebrates have you found any we found horse fly larva a water skipper uh, we're calculating the distance of the the speed of the current Three meters divided by 17.5 how did you do this measurement by the velocity equation, we divide the meters by the time. It's 0 0.11. How did you know how many meters per second it was going? Uh, we divided um, distance by time. Yeah, but so how did you work out the distance and the time? Like distance said, of what? Come on, see? Like two meters, and then we had a ball, a tennis ping pong ball. And then it floated, and the amount of time it took to float two meters was the time and the distance to me. So we're killing orangutans from mascara? <laughs> yeah. Um, a chocolate, okay? Yeah. Uh, one of the um, uh, museum in Sabah located at uh, uh, Tawau actually, it's a chocolate museum. They cut down all the trees and then grow this. Each tree, they have a distant 30 feet. 100 trees is gonna be like one acre.
uh, we are going white water river rafting here in the beautiful jungle or rainforest of Borneo. And we're gonna go real fast. And we're gonna end up at camp. Out there, kids. The dangerous waters of dangerous uncharted waters. Firstly explored by Kent College. Scream for that! <laughs> Best part is water rafting it was so fun. Just like having to pull everyone into this ship. Whoa, they're good. I can't even. <laughs> On a canopy walk, and we were in the rainforest at a place called Pouring Hot Springs, and we were walking on these um, elevated platforms, and we were stood on one of these platforms that was um, linked to a tree, and there was a little snake on there. It was a big snake, wasn't and it? It was only thirty <laughs> centimeters, and it was, anyway, it was uh, having its meal of a lizard, and it decided that it didn't like the people, so it, it went for a little wander. Walked all over my, um, or slithered all over my shoes and then went round to Miss Dibble, who doesn't like snakes and Not freaked out, pushed three or four people out of the way and ran over these uh, elevated <laughs> platforms to get away from it. Um, so that, that was a funny moment. That was uh, a very funny moment, amongst many, by the way. Hello, I'm Mariam. Hi, Can you man. tell me what was the most amazing thing we've done today? The waterfall. Yeah. Yeah, I'm having a wonderful day. We've done some really scientific investigations. We asked some strangers about their day and how their shops are going. We have just been to a waterfall. It was my first waterfall. It was so cool and fish ate our feet. And then earlier we went to um, we went on a trek in the canopy and Miss Dibble freaked out because a snake attacked her. Beach of Borneo, Malaysia. Water sampling and beach profiling uh, on a coastal scale. So our group is um, using probes to uh, find out information which is interesting to us about the water. So like the EC, the salt oxygen, temperature as well as the pH levels. And then this group is using chemicals to find out the like, rate of different, like the amount of different chemicals inside of uh, the water. And why are you doing this? We're going to find out if it's more polluted by the ocean than up in the mountains where we were before in the inward source land. And what did you find out about the river before? Before it was like no pollution, it was very clean, very organized, and it was, yeah, very nice. Hey, let me judge this. Yeah, camera's well. Is this from the same Ludo. place? So Ludo. I do have chicken temperature twice. Uh -oh. Uh -oh. oh, okay. What are you testing for? I'm testing for NO2. Stuart, what are you testing for? NO2 as well. Oh. NO2 as well. Good. And then we'll have this. What's the beat? And we will just wait until it changes color. And it will tell us how much of each is in it. If you have too much NO2, the weeds are going to, like, uh, not the weeds, the algae are going to, like, start yeah, overflowing really because they have too much fertilizer. And then it's going to, like, suffocate the oxygen level in the um, in the water. So, as you can see, this is the beach, and we have waves on this beach. The waves are caused by wind and the size of a fetch. A fetch is a distance, is a, no, it's the area of water between two pieces of land. The larger the fetch, the bigger the waves, because there's more space for the waves to build. Basically, it's called an inclinometer, and it, it measures the incline or slope of any uh, specific length. For example, it's 60 centimeters. Okay. Instead of it looks like a gun. Instead of having an iron sight, you have a plastic sight. So it's just two studs, which is made of plastic. You point it towards where you want to see at the end of the slope. So you take it from the bottom to the top of the slope, and then you release the. Tree 
trigger which stops the wheel from moving you read this and then you have the base from the top to the from the bottom to the top and then you Let's see the on. incline of any slope you could possibly want My best moment was when we were on the first day in the mud and we like me and Fatima kept on getting stuck in the mud and I had to like get tested. The best experience was this whole trip, like this whole trip was amazing. About the trip was the kids. They were fantastic. We could not have asked more of them. They threw themselves in literally to every situation we went to, head to tire in mud. There was no complaints, no hassle. They were just fantastic. And seeing their little faces when they saw new things like it's a crab and like this like wonder appeared over their faces. Yeah, they were absolutely the best thing about the trip. All the fun activities including snorkeling and hiking and swimming in the rivers and whitewater rafting and playing with mangroves and soaking mud. Oh my there wasn't a day in this vacation that wasn't like funny and that we didn't all laugh. The whitewater rafting was kind of fun. We were all trying to beat each other, trying to like go to bed. Morgan? Um, the mud. Probably the snorkeling. Because then you got, to, you got to dive underwater. The life jackets got in the way, but once we got them off, you could dive underwater and you could see all the different types of it fish. It was so beautiful. Like, you saw um, angel fish, um, you saw uh, stingrays, turtle. It was just magnificent. A lot of different stuff. Probably the best bit was to um, see our amazing students um, apply their classroom learning to a, a fieldwork environment. Some of our students see their first time experiences like yeah. diving on, well, snorkeling onto a coral reef and seeing waterfalls for the first time was, uh, was tremendous. I've learned that Sabah wants to leave Malaysia because Malaysia is no good because and it was warned by its parents. Because Malaysia, no. Sabah is part of Malaysia, yet Sabah produces and generates the highest revenue out of all the districts of Malaysia. However, they still have the highest poverty rates as well as earning the least amount of money, which is what, which is due to Malaysia. Yes, which is due to Malaysia taking this <laughs> revenue and distributing it to their own uh, districts, which are uh, within their own sovereignty, which is just no good for Borneo. So, in, on an economic scale, they want to leave. However, Malaysia does offer protection. Uh, in a military sense for Sabah in case anything happens if they get beefy with other countries. So. Because it, people are like so poor there so they take the easy way to find money so they basically bomb the fish in the sea to get food, not food but money. We kind of just learned a lot about things that we usually wouldn't have fun learning about in classrooms so that was kind of nice. And I didn't realize just how bad they did their dynamite fishings in the reef and the effect it has. But also how good the coral is at coming back in places now that they've banned the dynamite fishing. So it'll be really interesting. You sevens, watch out. You'll be looking at the same reef somewhere. We have to see will it actually kind of make a difference and progress. Be interesting. That was the best experience, I think, because I learned that it's okay to be embarrassed. We learned about like all the different like, species that were in rivers, like how like unhealthy it was in them. Like the beaches and how they can like, kind of listen to it. And we learned like uh, lots of different uh, fieldwork techniques to try and, for instance, in that, this case, like see how sustainable the ecosystem actually is and see how healthy the biodiversity and that kind of stuff is. I've obviously learned uh, a lot from you, Mrs. Dibble, uh, in terms Always. of the biology. Um, certainly I've learned a lot more about sampling for water quality which is an essential part of the IGCC geography curriculum um, but what I've learned more about is our students just getting to know them beyond the four walls of the school and uh, for the students to really sort of relax in our company and show their true personalities has been really good right, that's and I think we've some really really good relationships now. Everything was so good. Luna what are you going to be now? Biology. Yeah. <laughs> For a gorilla, so I'm gonna go live with the gorillas. Yes. <laughs> There's a lot of endangered species, believe it or not. We're destroying the earth.
like there's a lot of climate change problems and we might not see it because we're in Dubai but like when you go to the other side of the world it has a big impact it's kind of worrying I've been inspired because now I want to become a conservationist in the environment 